I was just done tidying here in my garage when I noticed a big problem. But instead of panicking, I have immediately saw the solution. And it's all because I have a 3D printer. So I have yet another reason here for you to buy a 3D printer if you don't already have one. So this is my motorcycle and that is not the problem by itself. But the problem is caused by the motorcycle. So the problem is in my garage. Take a look there. Can you see all these scratches here on the floor? And it's caused by me typically turning the handlebar on my motorcycle. When I'm recording here in the garage, I want to set up the motorcycle in a specific way. And if I turn the handlebar now, you will see that I'm dragging the stand on the floor and it's scratching the floor. This needs to be solved. This should be a super simple 3D model to make on my PC, except there is one big challenge that really makes this impossible to 3D print. But no worries, I have the solution for it. But first of all, here you can see me 3D modeling a base based on the footprint I took the picture of with my phone. And by the way, I'm going to 3D print this using a material called TPU that is almost like rubber. It's a very strong and soft plastic material that for sure will protect my floor from being scratched. This could, by the way, be the finished product and I can glue it on under the side stand, but I don't want to do that. I want to make it slotted or what to say, so I can just snap it into the side stand without any glue. That means I'm gonna make a lip that goes over the edges of the side stand, except for the rear part, so I can just snap it on whenever I want to use it. And here you can see the finished product and you can also see the problem. The part that is just hanging in thin air is just impossible to 3D print. You need to print on a solid surface. The solution is normally to add support. And just in case you don't know what that is, I made a very easy piece here to show you how support works. Here is the software that prepares the 3D model for printing. And it can show the print layer for layer how it's going to come out from the printer. And the blue part of the 3D model here, that is the overhang, the issue that will not work out properly. In the Slicer software, it's possible to say I want support under this area. And this is illustrated by the green part here. This will be printed together with the model layer by layer. And it's printed in such a way that it should be possible to tear it off when the print is done. So let's see how this goes in real life. On the left hand side the test piece is being 3D printed without support and to the right with support. I'm using PLA filament here. It's a plastic type that is very easy to 3D print with and it's also a plastic type where it's easy to break off the support because it's somewhat brittle. The first layers are the exact same on the 3D print, but then you can see here on the right hand side that the support is being built up. And here when it comes to the overhang, I'll slow down the footage so you can see what happens. And of course, the 3D print to the left will fail. Where the overhang is, the filament has nothing to stick to and it will just sag down. While there is no problem on the other piece where the temporarily support has been built up. Let me just fast forward and show you the result. Clearly the piece without support has failed, while the other piece with support has been printed successfully. But then comes the challenge of removing the support. For bigger pieces this is normally not a big problem, for, but for small pieces like this removing the support can be quite challenging. And especially when the support is not built up from the build surface, but from within the piece itself. Okay, so back to the piece I am gonna make. It has quite a complex overhang that goes all around the piece. 
And in addition, I'm going to 3D print with a flexible filament. And the TPU has very tough layer adhesion. That means it sticks very good to itself, which is a good property, but not if using it for support that you're going to remove. So I am going to do a twist here. I'm going to build up my own support and use PLA for it. That means I'm now 3D modeling a separate component that I will be 3D printed separately using PLA because PLA doesn't like TPU. It's two different kind of plastic materials that doesn't stick to each other. This piece is also super simple to design. I'm just making it 0.2 millimeters narrower and 0.3 millimeters lower to make a bit of a room to make it easier to insert. That was a lot of details. Not sure if my explanation made any sense, but I've already 3D printed the PLA part, the support part. It looks like this. And it's a tiny, tiny bit smaller than the counterpart, the part that's going to look like a rubber piece that this goes into. The 3D print was pretty simple for this one. Just a plain, easy PLA 3D print. And just in case you are new to 3D printing, I'm talking about plastic types and filament. And that is these spools that comes with different kind of plastic materials in different colors. You can get them in any color. And um, here I have a couple of small pieces. The PLA plastic type is the most common one. It's the one I used for this test piece. And this is very easy to 3D print but it has limitation when it comes to the strength. Now let me show you here. If I take this between two pliers, I can quite easily break it. It is a bit flexible when I bend this, but I can pretty easy split it in half. This is a small piece, but it's like a bit soft, but brittle, not too strong plastic. And this comes in these strands here and they are kind of uh, flexible when they are before they are 3d printed but when you 3d print them they are melted and put together again they change a bit of their properties here is a piece of the tpu the 3d print that is much more flexible it's almost like a piece of rubber here i have 3d printed just a test piece of uh, tpu just a 5 by 5 millimeter piece and I can bend it to any shape I would like to. It's, I don't even need the pliers, they are quite soft and it will never break. It all depends on how much infill. This is 40% plastic, 60% air inside here. And uh, it's not just very flexible, but it's almost unbreakable. I have no chance in pulling this apart. It can hold enormous amount of weight so both being squeezed pressed and stretched very very strong filament but of course it's soft can't always use a plastic type that is soft but for my specific uh, use case this time i think that would be the perfect type and the properties of these two filament types is that if I print them together they will not stick to each other. These two plastic types don't bond. So I will 3D print. Perhaps I best show you the plan here on my slicer software. The way I'm showing the 3D model here is that the different colors represent different speed of the 3D printing. And this uh, slicing and this preparation for the 3D print is a bit uh, complex. Even though the 3D model is simple, I will say the slicing here is the most complex part to get a useful part out of the 3D printer. The yellow part you can see here, that is the medium speed, is around 30 millimeters per second. It's how the speed of the 3D printer is measured. If I now go down to the first layer that you can see has this uh, blue greenish color, so that is around 20. The first layer always goes a bit uh, slowly to make it stick to the print bed. And then as I go upwards, you can see that the infill, the pattern here, is specifically made to have some rigidity 
when it comes to pressure, but I want it to be flexible on the bending movements. When I come higher up, I change the infill to this grid pattern that is more rigid sideways so that the lip that will hold it to the side stand on the motorcycle should be a bit more firm. And then comes this blue section and here is where the lip starts. So what I have done here is maybe you can see here on the right hand side it's a small indication and that is when the 3D print is here it will pause wait for me to be able to insert my manual support piece and then it will continue. Since this TPU really doesn't stick to the PLA I have to 3D print this very slowly extremely slowly especially on this part here where it will try to lay on top of the PLA that is quite slippery for the TPU. So the plan then is that uh, a couple of layers will run slowly to make sure that this part of the 3D print sticks and uh, lays where it's supposed to be and then it continues in normal speed. But so far everything is just theory. Well, I have prepared the support part but uh, crossing fingers, let's hope this actually works. It's time to test the piece on the bike. I have my side stand available here. First, I need to remove the white support piece. Hopefully now this is so flexible that I can bend this underneath. Yes, then I can pull out this and I have the support removed. Then hopefully I just can snap this onto the side stand. small but uh, important upgrade for my garage. What do you think? Anything you would have done differently? Anything I could have improved? Let me hear what do you think and we'd love to see you back in my next video. Bye bye!